I dare say most people in the Train Sim World community already know my thoughts on Rivet Games. They were the first third-party developer to make add-ons for Train Sim World, but they have since earned a bad reputation because of their often low-quality products, and the West Cornwall local route is especially bad in that regard. The silver lining here is that, in my opinion, there are at least two decent add-ons in Rivet's back catalogue. The add-ons in question are Island Line 2022 and the Fife Circle Line. We're revisiting the former today. And although this is my favourite TSW route, it is still not immune to criticism. This add-on was released in July 2022, making it one of the last add-ons to be released in the Trainsim World 2 era. For reference, I play the PC version of TSW, and know nothing about the console versions. All of the TSW add-ons that I own were bought from Steam, without referencing Peter Gabriel, and IOW 2022 is still available on Steam for TSW 4, costing $24.79 NZD at full price. Rivet had previously made an Isle of Wight add-on before the 2022 version, and the original includes the class 483 in Network Southeast colours, despite the route itself being set in either 2019 or 2020. I can't remember exactly when, to be honest. Outside of getting some comparison shots when I need them for a video, I have absolutely no interest in the original IOW route. In both cases, you only get the 8.5 mile long railway line from Ride Pierhead to Shanklin, and the 2022 version depicts the island line as it is after the 2021 modernisation project. Unfortunately, the Isle of Wight Steam Railway, which runs from Smallbrook Junction to Wootton, is not included in TSW. As for rolling stock, the 2022 version includes the Class 484 electric multiple unit. This curious beast was rebuilt by Viva Rail from X London Underground D78 stock, essentially as a conventional electric variant of the Class 230 diesel or battery units. In their London Underground days, these units were made up of six coaches, but the units rebuilt as Class 484s were shortened to just two coaches. There are only five Class 484s in existence, and they all entered service on the island line in 2021, thus continuing the tradition of repurposing ex-London Underground trains for the Isle of Wight. By default, the Class 484 in TSW is supplied in a fictional livery. Personally, I think it's ugly, but I understand that there were licensing issues preventing Rivet from including the real livery. There's a mod available for this route on the Trainson community website, and it was only recently made compatible with TSW4. As an aside, I'm predicting that Dovetail's next Dovetail Direct live stream in August will be an announcement of Train Sim World 5, even though they really do not need to be doing this FIFA-esque bullshit. In any case, the mod also adds new textures for the train interior, ticket machines, station posters, and plant pots, amongst other improvements. The catch is that mods only work on the PC version of TSW. Timetable mode serves to highlight just how limited the service variation is on this route. You get 56 playable services for the class 484, meaning that all you can do with this unit is the hourly ride pierhead to Shanklin service, which gets increased to half hourly at peak times, although the extra service terminates at ride esplanade. The only exceptions to the normal passenger services are the empty stock movements to and from the depot at the start and end of the day, and of course, there are no freight trains on this line. As for the scenarios, you get five of them, and I remember them being moderately interesting. The one that sticks out in my memory is called Blow Me Away, and this one involves driving a pair of Class 484s out of Shanklin after a storm and you have to stop numerous times to clear obstructions from the track. In timetable mode, you won't see the 484s coupled in pairs to make a four-car train, and you will only see that formation in the scenarios. Ride Pierhead to Shanklin is one of my favourite services to operate in the entire game, partly because it's short enough for a round trip to be completed in less than an hour. 
Indeed, they only need one train in service to maintain the hourly schedule, but this results in very short turnaround times at each end of the line. Apart from a loud fan that almost drowns out the motor noise, another issue I have with the class 484 is her overpowered physics. This unit's throttle has 7 power notches, but she accelerates so quickly that there's no point in going above notches 4 or 5. A staple feature of Train Sim World 4, and the TSW series in general, is the player's ability to get up out of the driver's seat and go explore the track, plus a small amount of the surrounding environment. Of course, you can play as a passenger too, but still no option to play as a signalman or guard. Go figure. On most TSW routes, the buildings do not have any interiors modelled, and for the most part, this is still the case on Island Line 2022. The exceptions can be found in the restored signal box at Braiding and the ticket office at Smallbrook Junction. I especially like the former because of its high level of detail, complete with the old diagram showing the platform for the now closed Beambridge branch, although none of the equipment in this box is functional. The Island Line's control center is actually the signal box at Ride St John's Road, but you can't access the interior of this building in TSW. Even in its default state, I thought the overall quality of this route was decent. And it's not often I say that about a Rivet Games product. But there is still a noticeable hiccup at Braiding Station, where you can clearly see the NPCs spawning on the southbound platform. I thought the spawn points were meant to be hidden away in areas inaccessible to the player. Meanwhile, Another spawn point for NPCs can clearly be seen by the player in the ticket office at Smallbrook Junction. Another issue I have with the add-on can be found at the Northern Terminus. In real life, you can clearly see the city of Portsmouth, on the island of Portsea, from Ride Pier. But in TSW, it looks like you're staring out into a blank ocean. There's still this weird bug at Smallbrook Junction, where NPCs getting off the train will glitch through the raised platform and onto the original platform level instead. In real life, the Class 484s will only stop at this station on days when the Isle of Wight Steam Railway is running. Smallbrook Junction Station opened in 1991, and its sole purpose is to provide an interchange between the Island Line and Steam Railway. But considering the lack of any steam locomotives on this route in CSW, let alone the Smallbrook Junction to Wootton line itself, it's a little silly to see any NPCs on the platform at this station, not to mention the 484s stopping here anyway. One last issue that I'll mention is where the 484's destination display is concerned. While it can be changed by the player, using the up or down arrow buttons next to this phone, the function is largely pointless because, when you load up a service in timetable mode, the display is already set to the correct destination anyway. Even without the enhancement pack from the TrainSim community website, and despite the buggy NPCs that still haven't been fixed, I can still recommend Rivet Games' Islands Line 2022 add-on for TrainSim World. Even at full price, I still think this is reasonable value for money, since you're getting the Class 484 and Ride to Shanklin route in the same package, and you don't need the original Isle of Wight, with Class 483, for the 2022 version to work. While the route is very short, and there is no service variation, the unique nature of the Class 484 and the Isle of Wight's fascinating railway history still make this add-on quite interesting. <laughs>